No one is afraid of monsters anymore, and other stories to read to the thing under the bed. The doors to the elevator opened, inside with three people from different floors, all of them heading towards the ground level. Crawford was looking down when the elevator arrived on the 22nd floor. When he heard the familiar bell, he looked up through the upper part of his glasses. No, it can't be, he muttered. Where he should have seen an elevator, he saw a mangled metal box with three bloodied and crushed bodies lying among the wreckage. Looking closer, he thought that he could see himself, his head separated from his body, lying among the debris. He took off the glasses and rubbed his eyes, hard. Going down? He looked up and saw the man holding the door open for Crawford. Crawford put the glasses back on and saw the same man lying in the wreckage, blood covering his face, only this time the body was looking up at him and saying in a grotesque, guttural voice, Going down, sir? Crawford took off the glasses again and only saw three people standing in the elevator, waiting on him. He backed up slowly, not wanting to know, not wanting to see what might happen. The man holding the door open only shrugged and stepped back into the box. The doors to the elevator closed. Crawford stood a moment and then approached the closed doors. He put his ear close to the door, could feel the cool metal against his skin as he pressed against them. For a moment, he could hear nothing but the whine of the machinery as it lowered the elevator car slowly towards the ground floor. He smiled, thinking how foolish it all was. Until he heard a loud snap the sickening fall and the awful screams and finally the fatal crash as three people were quaintly crushed. He backed away from the door and headed to the stairs. The apartment was dark. There seemed to be no sounds coming from anywhere. I switched on the light just as the phone rang. Hello? I said, my voice trembling. I'm coming home, Richard. Wait for me, Charlotte said. Who the hell is this? I yelled. Don't you know me, Richard? You should. After all, we are married, she told me, her voice dripping with menace. This is not a very good joke, I said, trying to play the whole thing off. If you really needed the money, you should have just asked. Such a shame, but that's all over now. After ten years, we will finally be together. I really don't like the new body. I think that you could have done a lot better. She hung up the phone. I stood there and stared at the instrument in my hand. What did she mean? 